Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back after lunch. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you will enjoy also our next session, uh, which is a panel discussion about building a better dashboards. So let's welcome Martin, Alexis, Lota, and Fran. Stage is yours. Hi, guys. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you for the intro and uh, welcome, everyone. So the, the topic today is uh, building a, a better dashboard. So wh why are we discussing this? So we have probably seen already through different sessions that uh, even though we have more and more and greater and greater tools to visualize things, we have as well more and more journeys and more and more data and more and more behavior. So how do we cope with all of this? So um, we have here um, three great speakers. Um, so we have um, Lota, who is um, consulting from app publishers to um, industries and has already seen really good and great practices, but as well misleading practices. So we can wait to hear from the good and as well what to avoid. Um, she formerly ran Growth at Runtastic, so um, I'm sure we can learn a lot. Um, so Alexis, um, joining uh, from the other side of the world, so you will see there's a variety of uh, locations as well from the speakers. So she's currently based in Singapore, working for Accenture Interactive, and balancing um, all these different user behaviors with uh, clean, attractive, and a great design, which we shouldn't forget about. And then we have Martin, um, head of marketing at App Agent. So um, he's consulting um, not only on the analytics side, but as well on the data infrastructure. That's a really um, hard topic um, with all this big data, huge data. So that's where um, he has been helping many clients on mobile product and marketing analytics tools as well. So we are going to be covering as well infrastructure and tools. We have that angle. So without further ado, um, thank you to our presenters. And uh, I'm going to be starting with one question. Um, and this is, we are talking about let's do a better dashboard. But in reality, what is a dashboard? Martin. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for the first question, Fran, and uh, welcome everybody to our session today. Uh, so happy to, happy to have uh, to answer the first question. Uh, we actually uh, met quite a number of companies that did not really realize what is what is the difference between a dashboard and a report. So I think it's a good point to kind of address that initially. In my mind, a dashboard is basically a static set of visualizations or pieces of information as to speak uh, where you can basically every day every week every month uh, check to understand the performance uh, do a let's say a, a tiny bit of analysis but rather consume the data that was already prepared for you in a similar fashion for each of your sessions whereas the report goes much more in depth and is very kind of custom to each and every situation that is being created. So when it comes to the reporting in general, what we are advising companies is to just split these into two groups. And one of them is what do you need to be looking at frequently and uh, that should be probably dashboarded because that's the data points that you need to see pretty pretty often and regularly and uh, and reports, well, which is something very different, uh, goes in depth and should be defined separately for each occasion. That's a, that's a great definition. So, so we are seeing the difference between what we want to analyze and we want to see short term. Any, any other comments? Um, since there is some piece of uh, visualization, um, Alexis, do you want to add anything to this? Um, yes, of course, the dashboard is a way is a great way of displaying information. Um, usually it's a general overview, but it allows you to deep dive into various topics as well, separate it out. A lot of times people want to put everything into a dashboard, I realized. Um, but as Martin said, it's a dashboard, not a report. So it's a great way to view it as an overall. Although I'm curious, uh, Martin, how you feel about, because you said the dashboard is mostly static, but how do you feel about the way that the future is moving forward with, you know, machine learning and how, you know, graphs and stuff within those dashboards are becoming more predictive and more interactive? I mean, interactivity is a great thing in the hands of a person who is able to handle such a power. Uh, so when I'm talking about dashboards, I'm usually talking about people that rather consume the information 
And then the question really is how proficient with data use are the people that are the users of the dashboard? So obviously all of these things are great. Uh, they've got their use cases, but in terms of the definition by itself, uh, I mentioned static, quote unquote, uh, as kind of a recognizable sign of a dashboard. But uh, yes, wonderful functionality, but with great power comes a great responsibility. Very true. Yeah, I could maybe also follow up on, on that comment that I think the audience is super critical. So who's that dashboard built for and what is the goal of the dashboard? Because I do think those can differ as well. Um, I've seen a lot of times um, dashboards uh, on walls, on TVs and companies' offices. So it's really just like the key figures of maybe overall company goals. And I thought that was super helpful to um, re remind everybody that these goals exist. Um, continue help continuously helping them looking at the goals and how much more they have to go what way they're still missing to reaching their goals um so that would be really the i think the static part of just looking at plain kpis maybe four or five at maximum but then you can also have a dashboard for management or maybe for product management with specific product kpis that are relevant and i think to have some more opportunities to play around with numbers there might make a lot of sense also and I'd probably add just one last comment to this. Uh, there can be many different forms of dashboards, but uh, what you're going to hear me probably talking a bit about during this session is just the simplicity. And from the usage standpoint, uh, my, and uh, let's stress it out, my personal opinion is dashboard should be uh, very targeted to efficiency of getting some kind of information. Uh, so you should be able to just look somewhere and find a piece of data that you want to find very easily without a lot of clutter. So the less clutter, the better. And obviously there's different user groups and stuff like that, uh, but that's kind of my, my core message. Uh, dashboards should be uh, a way to get very easy access to the most important pieces of information. Well, that's great. So so, so we got our first, uh, our first answer in terms of uh, part of our title. So is, is the dashboard. Now we know what it is, uh, that's great. And we're starting covering a bit the better. So um, maybe the next question, and I, I know we have started covering some uh, good practices, like um, a lot I was mentioning about targeting a specific audience, etc. But in, in our opinion, what does a good dashboard look like? So what is what is what is good um, in terms of uh, dashboard? Maybe just to um, yeah state that again, I do think uh, the number of KPIs needs to be little. So I already know Martin would agree because he already talked about simplicity. Um, so maybe let's put not more than five KPIs in there. And I do think it's helpful, even though we talk about numbers um, and uh, yeah, the content is key, so to speak. I do think the visualization helps a lot to get buy-in from people and to get them actually to engage with the dashboards and look at them more frequently. So even though I personally really like a good Excel sheet, <laughs> I know a lot of people don't, um, and they should still have access to, to dashboards. And often the audience is a bit bigger uh, of dashboards, so I think it should be also visually appealing. Um, I don't know, probably Alexis has some best practices from a design perspective. <laughs> I do, I definitely do. Um, so I mean, just to elaborate uh, further on what like you and Martin have said, simplicity and consistency are the two main rules that I use when I'm designing any type of dashboard. Um, it has to be easy enough for the user to understand and to you know actually take in the information. If there's too much going on, typically it kind of becomes um, overloaded and useless. So some of the best practices is to also contain the information um, within tiles or you know, respecting the grid layout as well. So you have to actually put it down and think about how you want to, to lay out that information before you even start putting you know, a lot of those graphs in so that you can get rid of a lot of the clutter. Um, again, it has, to, it has to flow in the right way as well. The most important information needs to be the most uh, upfront and most relevant information. And to add my two cents, uh, and by the way, agree with everything Lord Alice has said, uh, especially with kind of the good good user flow when you structure the information one after the other. 
And usually, if you wake up Monday morning, go to work, and kind of want to see what happens uh, during the weekend or during the past week, then you probably have some kind of a data journey in mind. Like these are the pieces of information you want to look, you know, start from the top level. And then if it makes sense for that particular uh, app, product, whatever, uh, to get into more detail in some areas and have these areas and then gradually get to more and more detail. And just like following the, the usage journey of the person who's going to be using the dashboard. I think that's extremely important. Uh, yeah, the, the dashboard so should tell a story yeah. is what you're saying. Exactly. And by the way, it's I, I never thought it's rocket science, but you'd be surprised about how many things we've seen that just do not fit these principles. So honestly, uh, without getting into like any, any unnecessary details, a good dashboard is a usable dashboard that contains like data, good visualizations without going overboard on the visuals, but still obviously some people, you know, uh, dine with their eyes, as to speak. And it is the same for data. So in case it's beautiful, uh, all the better, but uh, never sacrifice the clarity of the information and the story you're trying to tell uh, just by visuals. Uh, so that would be it. And just reflecting, once again, reflecting user groups. Uh, there's no dashboard that can work well for a CEO and for a UA manager. So uh, that's also something that I think needs to be said. Like a good dashboard is the one that also just contains the data that you need. And it's going to be different based on your role in the company. So ideally have a set of dashboards. Each dashboard should go to a different set of users. And sometimes it can even contain very similar information, but just the way it's structured and laid out can be different. Uh, I know that then it's going to be, in my eyes, uh, a good dashboard. Okay, so let, let me build on that one. So what we are basically saying is that a good dashboard is uh, something that is clear, simple, and well-structured. So thanks, thanks for that. So we now know what is a good dashboard. And uh, now the question is, how do we make it better? So um, any in this case, we, we, we kind of covered a bit of the principles that you would recommend everybody. But do you have any specific examples of uh, those or don'ts in terms of your experience where you have brought a dashboard from good to better? Do you have any any kind of insights that you could share? And, uh, we don't need to give many details, but maybe you found something that was not clear enough or was not simple enough. I don't know. Anything you want to share? <laughs> um, I'll kick this one off. Uh, I, I could probably share many visuals of kind of what unquote dashboard nightmares uh, scenarios. And uh, trust me, we've seen quite a lot of things, as I mentioned. Uh, but in terms of building building better stuff, I think it's just basically following, following the guides or the guides. Uh, following the points that we just mentioned, really. And for most cases, it's going to be enough. And it sounds simple. And in fact, it is simple. Like, it's no rocket science. Just really get the proper data, visualize it properly. There is your better dashboard. So that applies to most companies and to most dashboards that I've seen. So simple as that from, from my end. Maybe to jump in, we talked a lot about the how the dashboard should look like. And I think. Uh, Big focus should be also about what is actually in the dashboard. So get the right data, something Martin said, and I do think that's easy said, but it's not easy done. Um, so maybe in terms of getting from good to better, could be to rethink what are you actually showing and what are the KPIs that are visible, and sometimes uh, break away maybe from old KPIs you were looking at into new ones which reflect your situation better um, or would help you to make better decisions. So I find that that's pretty hard for somebody who's maybe for even a couple of years um, been used to looking at the same numbers every morning because in their mind that reflects their business. And I understand that it's super difficult to say, okay, I'm not gonna look at these numbers anymore because they don't make as much sense or they don't help me to actually steer my business. Um, so I do think from good to better could be to really refocus on what you're looking at. So what numbers are you seeing? Um, and how do they help you to yeah change or improve your your product? I guess from my perspective, um, what I've seen for some of the do's and don'ts is, well, sometimes um, you know when we're putting in all this effort for these dashboards, is you know designers, developers, uh, you know data scientists. Uh, 
we tend to assume what the user wants and we put something in that's maybe a bit too elaborate, like Martin said earlier, you know, with great power becomes great responsibility and it just kind of clutters the entire dashboard and it doesn't make it useful. So I guess it would just be to not overwhelm the users, you know, keep it simple, keep it interactive, keep it with the story, keep it, you know, so they can, that the user understands and knows exactly what they want to do next with that information. And one thing to add to it, if I may, uh, and to expand the question a bit uh, around that, that do's and don'ts of the dashboards themselves, but to the actual usage and usability of the dashboards. Uh, there definitely needs to be a connection of relevancy between the user of the dashboard and the team that prepares the dashboard. Uh, and only then you can assure that the KPIs that you're looking at are well-defined and actually relevant for you. Uh, very simple case, ROAS, ROI, net ROI, gross ROI, like once again, many people define even profit profitability in different ways. And probably there's gonna be a bit of a different KPI for a UA manager and the CEO. Uh, and if you mix that up, it, it can become pretty confusing. So that's just one example. And from, from the product and just very simple metric, for example, session, number of sessions, length of sessions, how is it defined? What is a session? And it can be very different from different apps. So also in these cases, the person's even like philosophical approach to the metric and how should be that defined needs to be an input to the whole process. So in case it's a session, you know, does it start when you just open the app? Or does it start, for example, when you play a song or do something meaningful in the app? And you know, what, what about the length of the session? In case you really want to be looking into that, and be able to assess that in an absolute value, then it needs to be defined perfectly. So like, what does it mean that the person is active in the app? That's one thing. And also which events should be used to even define that. And for some metrics, trust me, it can be a very rigorous and, and a deep process that, uh, that need to be tackled. And very frequently, people just don't take time and just use some default metrics and like very simple understanding which in that case, it provides you at least with some information, but uh, doesn't really give you that type of information that you, as a person who was not involved in the definition, would expect. Uh, so a length of session, you probably, okay, so it's how long people are using the app. But uh, based on the events you're using to calculate that, it can be a very, very different thing and actually be very misleading. So uh, once again, uh, no rocket science, but the process needs to be reflected on both the, let's say, preparation uh, and engineering end, and also on the usage end. Uh, and if you want to make a better dashboard, then actually having the better metrics into the dashboard uh, is probably something that also can help uh, to get get the information uh, to the level that is needed. Okay, so let, let, let's take this uh, all these answers to, to move into the into the next uh, section. But I just want to, to summarize. So. Um, things we have covered is uh, what, what brings from good to great. And uh, let me use this example. Maybe some of you have seen the uh, pictures on social networks or, uh, or the video of the launch of the Falcon X. So how the dashboards, uh, the, the rocket dashboard moved from the Apollo 12, very cluttered, to a very simplistic uh, way that looks more like a, a tablet with uh, maybe different metrics, as Lotta was mentioning. Maybe metrics have changed from... 50 years ago to today, or maybe the way we interpret those metrics have changed, as Martin was saying, or as Alexis was explaining, we, we want to have a more uh, simple and cleaner visualization like the one in the, in the tablet. And now the, the key question is, uh, now that we know how to make it better, is uh, it's about tracking. So we have covered this, the importance of these metrics in terms of uh, um, how, how we can improve the, the, the dashboard. So now the question is, uh, what do we need to track? So let's start with trying to clarify this. Uh, we're going to be deeper into these thoughts about sessions or number of users or ROI. So what are the, com the most common metrics that you find in dashboard? So kind of what, what would you recommend the, the audience to prioritize when they are building a dashboard? Happy to jump start this question. Uh, I do think it's a good idea in principle to follow the user journey. Uh, if you have one, 
on the one hand side and on the other hand side uh, follow the goals that you're having because as we said the dashboard should be like a general more broad overview um so it so it should definitely reflect both of these sides so typical user journey um going back to the flow could be starting with in-stores registration maybe first critical action in an app uh, could be uploading a photo starting a game some critical action and then um, obviously quite often going on to the monetization features so i would say follow this flow um yes and then looking at what are the goals of the company i mean more so the long term than the short term goals is it growth focus is it increasing revenue streams um is it any particular actions that you want to see more interactions in a community sort of feature um so keeping those in mind when building your dashboards any other any other recommendations in terms of uh, metrics that you would follow any other to look at so i'm going to add to it a bit uh, mostly reiterating what Lada said, it's about, the, it's about the journey and the journey is based on what people need. Uh, so about the metrics really depends who the dashboard is for. Uh, probably no one size fits all, but in general, there are just usual suspects metrics that everybody uses. Like you're probably gonna be interested, you know, exactly. New users and, and the activity and retention and monetization metrics and, and stuff like that. So usually, if you put these up, uh, even people that have a hard time working with some sophisticated data will probably get a pretty good understanding about what's going on. And these metrics are not seen you know, as most common uh, just by a chance. It, they basically describe most of what's, what's happening in the app. So that would, be, that would be my advice in case you're just building something that start just with the usual suspects. And then you're going to see some users will look at that and start asking questions right away. Like, okay, so how does this work? And want, want something in more detail. And uh, that's where we start to kind of think about, okay, so should these other things be dashboarded or should these be you know, made into a granular report, for example, uh, because it goes deeper. Uh, so that's when people start asking questions, when you really understand like if they're actually using the dashboard or not. But it's much easier to just give them something basic and have them think about it and come up with the questions of what they're interested in, then just swarm them with you know a load of stuff that uh, they're gonna have a hard time even figuring out where to start. So once again, uh, it might feel like I'm talking about the users of dashboards as people ex inexperienced with data, uh, but yeah, I've seen it all over the board that in case you throw a lot of stuff on them, they just are kind of content with it, but don't ask questions and become, become overwhelmed. And Martin just reminded me of a situation actually um, fitting to that where a, a bit of a broader dashboard was uh, visible to everybody in the company on like a browser level. And I realized that almost everybody looked at these numbers every day and thought, you know, try to make sense of them or um, religiously looked, okay, how are we standing? Where are we at? And I do think it should be so general that it's also not too time consuming because it's good to give everybody the information about where the company is, where it's heading, where we're at. Um, but if you can really actively do something to improve these numbers, like on a daily level, um, you shouldn't spend too much time to look at them also on a daily level because that's becoming quite inefficient. And it's a bit something of people who want to, you know, seem to have like a really important role for themselves and like to talk about this, but actually it's not really affecting their job. And you need to be a bit careful as a company to not yeah, build like big heads, so to speak. There's just one, one thing to add. I mean, this this session is called ping building pong, a... Martin. Sorry? We're doing ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, this session is called building a better dashboard, and uh, I think it's it's kind of clear that uh, there can be many dashboards. So probably, uh, if if we wanted to go into more detail about which metrics should be included, uh, we should go into a session, you know, which would be called building a better dashboard for user acquisition, for example, because in general, it's it's really hard to answer this. It's just like really really depends. Um, 
So that, that would be my addition to that. I really like the spirit. We should probably split the session and uh, um, do a whole day with uh, build a better uh, dashboard for uh, user experience, etc. So yeah, definitely. No, that that that's a great thing, Alexis. Um, I want to ask you something. So we, I think between Martin and, and Lot have been like really really great at uh, providing examples of uh, um, what metrics and how to get to them. So, um, but the question is, is there any way to make those metrics more visible? To, to, to better visualize them? Um, well, I mean, there's obviously a set standard of like uh, visualizations that you use, like bar charts, uh, you know, bubble charts, things like that, uh, depending on what numbers you're trying to show. Um, the best way to start that is, of course, like Martin and Lotha said, is by following the user journey. If you have that, you at least have a clear guideline on how on what the user wants to see. So you can get a better idea of how you want to visualize it. Um, a lot of the time, um, sometimes I get way too into my own work and I'll try and do it the way that I think that it should be done. Another way of making sure that you're using the right way to display the information is by user testing. I actually have someone that will be using the dashboard give their feedback and give you know the way that they would see it. Sometimes, you know, you being you working on it, you get lost in your own you know, your own uh, world of how you think it should be and it's not actually useful. So that's kind of the way that I would go for it. Yep. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> just one last, uh, just uh, to kind of prove, prove Alex's point, uh, we came up with a couple of wonderful visualizations, both for LTV and also for traffic split. I still think these are the best visualizations since the sliced bread. But uh, yeah, sometimes it just it, it it doesn't work because people are not used to it. Sometimes being original and even concise and uh, even genius with some visualizations is only good for yourself. Uh, so that's what we learned the hard way. Like we invested a lot of time into figuring out how to, you know, visualize something. Uh, so everything is like included and it's very concise and, and it's beautiful. We did and we showed it to people and it required 10 minutes of explaining about how does it work. So uh, yeah, been there, done that. Uh, still think that some visualizations can be uh, can be made so they contain all all the stuff and and are super wonderful but and it's it's hard to read very frequently so once again efficiency efficiency even in the way uh, that people can really understand what what you're showing them uh, not everybody is a dashboard designer not everybody is a data expert and uh, we are sometimes forgetting about that at least when i'm talking about myself yep well said And anything to add about uh, in terms of your experience with uh, visualizations? Oh, no, I really agree with uh, what Alexis said. I mean, also, if somebody puts a lot of work into building a dashboard, and sometimes if you have requested something and then you can't really work with it, it's not practical, you need something else, I, I think some people might be a bit hesitant to go back and actually ask them to change that. But I do think this is a really good and necessary step. So. Yeah, maybe everybody be brave and uh, do second and third rounds with feedback because in the end that's something you will really work on work with on a daily basis and i think everybody who's working on building the dashboards also wants to make sure that you actually do work with them in the end and they don't create something and then um nobody's really using it because it needs to be twi twisted just one more time yeah Great. So, so we have a few a few questions. So, so, so before we move we move forward with 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 our own uh, panel, I thought maybe bring in some of the questions because they relate to what we are just discussing. So, um, Natalie um, was is asking us any resources that you would recommend to understand or let's say to pick what is the visualization that works best for a specific data for a specific goal. For a specific KPI, I mean, you have your experience, you're sharing your best practices, but for someone maybe who wants to, to look at something different, do you have any resources that you would recommend? Hmm, that is a hard one. By the way, hi, Lota, thanks for posting a question and nice to have you. 
Uh, in terms of resources, I mean, you can probably Google many resources. I don't have anything in particular, but in terms of a general answer about what should be used for any metric, uh, once again, uh, like staying true to the spirit of efficiency, trend lines and bar charts and retention matrices uh, can be used in the very most cases and just tables with data. Uh, so yeah, in case we were talking about one specific metric, for example, uh, I would be happy to elaborate more, but in general, uh, these are the best visualizations. Yeah, I guess to, I mean, you have to see kind of what the information is and how you, you know, how you want to visualize it first and make sure that it includes all of the data that you need and that the user needs um, to determine what the best approach is. So it's... And by the way, what I can, what I can probably yeah, also it's, share... Yeah, it's lots of Google. Yeah, sorry. sorry, Alexis, go ahead. Continue. There's a delay, so... Okay. <laughs> uh, it's probably my oh. internet on the other side of the world. <laughs> uh, yeah, it always takes like two seconds when somebody's talking oh. to, to catch up. So yeah, what can we do? Um, I just wanted to share our approach when, uh, when thinking about how to visualize things. We basically created a spreadsheet with a list of like all the possible metrics. And that's all the possible metrics for uh, product, uh, marketing, ASO, just some high level stuff. And that came from many articles that we read and many videos that we've seen. And that's where like we've got one source of information for the visualizations. And we actually are posting references about how people do these things. So in case it's, you know, uh, I don't know, session length. So in case we read an interesting article, we just we just keep it there. And in case uh, you're serious about visualizations, that's, that's also one thing that I kind of recommend doing. Uh, just having a list of things, uh, having, you know, one place where you're, where you're keeping track um, of how other people are doing it. And once you run over an interesting visualization, uh, just save it because you never know if, if you're gonna need it. I actually do that with a lot of my old designs. I'll keep I'll keep them just as a to to recall them when I need to do something again. Like how did mm -hmm. I do that? And then I'll I'll look back again. If I don't have it, then you know I'll, I'll draw it out. I'll try and find some way to do it that might make sense. And then I'll I'll put it mm -hmm. I'll put it in the screens. Or like you said, I'll use Google. <laughs> yep. Another question by um, by Natalie is um, as well. Um, where do we put the definitions of the metrics? So, is there any specific place where you kind of keep everybody on track or in check whether um, the definition of that KPI is uh, X, Y, or Z? It's inside the dashboard in another space. Hmm. I've had um, good experiences with um, putting it like in an extra tab because if you put it in the dashboard itself, most of the time it becomes too crowded. But I think it is very handy to have the definition really close by the dashboard, especially if a lot of people are looking at it. So um, yeah, just one tab with the definitions I think is helpful. For us, um, we actually have an Excel sheet for each of the projects. And uh, it's it's a bit broader than dashboards, but I'm, I'm going to explain it anyway. Like we've got one sheet which contains the events that are being sent and when exactly are they being triggered. So you have an understanding exactly about what each of them does. And we've got another tab, which is the metrics definition. And it's linked to these events. So you know that, for example, uh, a session means that you receive an event which is, you know, session X started, for example. So you can kind of revert back and really understand how the session is defined and when does that even get triggered and understand that, okay, so the session doesn't start when the app starts, but it starts once the user clicks an item in the menu, for example. So that's, let's say, the session. And then the session is defined based on this event, and ends when you know another event is sent or you don't hear from the user for a minute or something like that. So that's when you understand that, hey, the metric session is defined this way and it links to this event which triggers that way. And then 
on the next step, it's visualizations, and that's where you even define how these things will be visualized. And uh, we link this file uh, to the actual dashboard. We're using Data Studio most often, so it's, it's very simple to just add a link. And in case you want to learn more, then just click and go and understand the whole the, uh, the, the whole thought process and the data process behind each metric. Uh, and uh, one last note, we also tried putting explanations behind, uh, like besides the charts. Uh, but uh, yeah, exactly as Lota said, it's very cluttered. Uh, and honestly, most people just get confused. Uh, it's like sometimes even trying to explain that can be can be confusing for a lot of users. So for the ones that want to find out, we're giving them away, but uh, we don't want to confuse the rest. Great. So I think we, we covered some of these questions. We have another one that connects with what we are going to be discovering now. But uh, in this uh, change of gears, um, I, I think that many people might be seeing what we are talking about and say, well, our jobs are... Um, Pretty awesome, pretty interesting. So I want to ask you um, if we could share with the audience, uh, what is the hardest part in your uh, everyday job? And as well, what brings fun? So if you could maybe share about your own uh, experience. I think Alexis should start. She looks like she wants to start. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, does no one want to talk about the difficulties in their job? Go for it. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> every every dashboard is different. The problems, you know, are different. A lot of times I find it's like I elaborated before. Sometimes, you know, you try and put too much into them because you want everything. And it's like deciding what information is important and what to take away and how to simplify it. At least, you know, when you're building a dashboard. Um, so that's probably the hardest part of my job there is like to make sure that you know there's a certain line um that stays so it doesn't become overwhelming yeah maybe to um follow with the what is difficult but also what makes it a lot of fun is sometimes to really yeah get people to rethink their overall values that they're looking at so one example i have it's it's really old news, especially as everybody has been talking about the lifetime value since, I don't know, eight years or so. Um, but there are still a lot of companies who don't really look at cohort perspectives. So I've had many times already the trouble of explaining why it is so relevant to look at cohorts, um, install cohorts, um, and not always at the whole um, range of numbers at an end. At an, time at a certain time um, so so that's sometimes a bit frustrating and uh, takes a bit of time but then on the other hand also it's really fun once you get people to yeah change their behavior a bit and have this aha moment where they realize okay wow and I'm actually seeing what change did I drive um, how do new people react to a new product feature um, a change in monetization etc so i do think yeah it's difficult sometimes but then it's also super rewarding to see that you've actually been able to help by yeah, changing some of the means to see the numbers hmm i agree um and from from my perspective probably the hardest and the most fun part in our case or in my case is just understanding the level uh of the data users and gauging that properly. Just like how much can you afford? Uh, how simple does the report have to be or how complicated does it have to be? And finding a common ground and finding a language that we can use to talk to these people. And uh, we are an agency, so there's you know a lot of clients, uh, different, ex different expertises. Like sometimes there's a CEO that's super like, tech efficient uh, and sometimes you're basically uh, talking to people that don't have almost any experience with the data. So just kind of finding the common language and how 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 to how to adjust uh, your your language uh, is quite challenging. And uh, the most fun part, I like, what is data? Data is basically insights. It's understanding. Uh, so that's what I love. Just uh, even myself when when we are working on a new product. Um, it's just understanding how things work. 
and uh, I've got like an honest under uh, like an honest uh, joy from understanding the stuff myself. So that's the first part that I really enjoy about the job. And uh, obviously, the the very best part is empowering people, making them understand, and making or helping things click in the end. And part of that is dashboards. Most of it probably uh, goes to reports because usually these things have to be mined in more detail. Uh, but still, sometimes it's going out there, a real piece of information that is actually well-defined can go a long way. And, uh, and you see people finally, finally starting to understand what's going on. That's great. Well, we, we are we are four minutes to go and uh, we want to cover some things about the future. And it happens as well that Travis is asking us what the dashboard of the future looks like in, 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 in our opinion, which connects with uh, our next topic, which is uh, how do we move forward? What shifts, what changes do we expect? So maybe a quick, quick round table in terms of how do we see the future and then uh, if anybody else, I see another question from Pedro. If there is anybody else who has a question, maybe we'll be able to pick one or two more. So um, let's go with it. Okay. I mean, I'll keep my answer brief. Um, I mean, with technology and predictions changing all the time, the way that people look at data, um, we have to find new information, new ways to connect this information to people. You know, new ways to potentially visualize it moving forward. So that's what I see the dashboard going towards, you know, dashboards of the future going towards. It's just constantly updating, constantly being able to drive user behaviors, actions, you know, make them useful. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to continue. Uh, dashboards, it really depends, by the way, about how distant future are we, are we talking about, because it can be one year, it can be 10 years. Uh, there were and are attempts at automating insights and actually, you know, throwing recommendations into dashboards and stuff like that. That all sounds like a, a lovely inner music to my ears, but I've never seen it work very well uh, in dashboards, but uh, might be just me. But I think that this is something that hopefully will appear sometime, just really like giving you proper uh, ad hoc uh, additions to the actual dashboard. But otherwise, honestly, I don't really see like philosophically anything changing that much besides perhaps this. It's just like in the end, dashboards are about simple data, uh, visualizing the main things that are happening and the core principles of simplicity, efficiency, like readability and the common language. Uh, that's just something that we're passing over information. So it's it's just going to stay uh, mostly the same. So that's uh, that would be my take on that question. Yeah, I'd agree to what Martin says. I do think that you still need to do the work. <laughs> it's still us doing the work and doing the thinking, even though you have a nice dashboard. And I think that's a good thing um, because it makes the job fun also. <laughs> Otherwise, um, yeah, so I think that's good. And maybe one uh, one addition, which is not so much for our publishers, but I do like um, to think about as well dashboards more in the public eye. So um, I think it was pretty. I'm pretty much the first time uh, where I've seen really the entire public probably of this world looking at a dashboard of this when the COVID crisis was there with the Johns Hopkins University dashboard. I think most of you probably knows that with the world map, but what, you know, where were infections and um, yeah, I do think this is maybe a different way on how we can use dashboards also to find a source that's actually truthful um, that, that can be trusted and that aligns everybody on, hey, where are we actually standing? Uh, I thought that was was quite a different and a new way for people to look at things and not everybody looks at their own news outlet, but use a dashboard for the facts um, and then start from that. I, I, so, so connecting with this, so, so we see this uh, um, idea of bringing predictions and uh, connecting maybe uh, AI and all these different actions to, to the dashboard, but we still have to do a lot of work. So, uh, one question that we are getting from, from Pedro is um, links very well with our previous comment on engagement, and we have 30 seconds, so we need to be very, very fast, is how do we know that the dashboard is doing a right, the right thing? How do we know that it's being good for engagement? <laughs> that's, that's actually an awesome question, and honestly, I, I never thought of that. Uh, 
what I what I can add uh, one one little story um, as we are using Data Studio uh, for as as our visualization tool, uh, then. Uh, many people don't realize it's possible that you can actually implement Google Analytics to understand how frequently are people looking at different dashboards. Uh, so that's th th that might be an interesting piece of insight, just like how often and how frequently are people consuming the data. Uh, by the way, what we learned, uh, in case there's a high-level dashboard, just really with the main metrics, the like super concise one, 